Hello and welcome. We talked about the repository and the facade patterns in previous videos. Now, let's have a look at the factory pattern. The factory pattern is a creational design pattern that provides a way to create objects without specifying the exact class of object that will be created. This is useful when a class can't anticipate the type of objects it must create. Instead of calling the class constructor directly, you call a factory method which is responsible for creating those objects. Let's take a look at a simple example of how to implement the factory pattern. Let's say that we are building a shape drawing app. The app will have three shapes, cycles, squares, and rectangles. We'll start by defining a protocol called shape that defines a draw method. Next, we'll create three structs that implement the shape protocol. Now, we'll create an enum called a shape type with three cases, cycle, square, and rectangle. This will be used to specify the type of shape we want to create. Finally, we'll create a shape factory class that provides a getShape method that returns an object of type shape based on the shape type passed as an argument. To use the factory, we simply need to create a shape factory object and use it to create a cycle, square, and rectangle object. Awesome! Let's run the code now. We can see in the console that the drawing method is called for each shape, the cycle, the square, and the rectangle. And we don't even have to create those objects directly, but use our factory to create them. A factory is also useful when you have an object to create, but it requires dependencies or information to be provided to create it. As an example, let's create a factory to generate job applicant response emails. The factory should generate email details depending on whether the candidate was accepted, rejected, or needs to be interviewed. Let's define a job applicant and an email model. An applicant has a name and an email, and four types of status. The email subject and message body will be different depending on an applicant's status. Now let's create an email factory struct. It will have a property called the sender email, and we can set it within its initializer. We create a function named create email that takes a job applicant and returns an email object. Inside the method, we add a switch case for the job applicant's status to populate the subject and message body variables with appropriate data for the email. Now the email templates have been constructed, it's time to use a factory on an applicant. I'm going to uh, pass some code here. Right. So uh, here uh, we're gonna create a job applicant named uh, Adi. Next, we create a new email uh, factory instance. And finally, um, we use the instance to generate emails uh, based on the status uh, of the applicant. So here, for the for Adi creation, the status was new. Here, we set it to interviewed, and here, we set it to hire, hired. Let's now uh, run the code. And uh, we can see here that uh, we received uh, the application for for this and uh, after the interviewed uh, the email change uh, we want to interview you right and here for the hired uh, status uh, here is the email uh, we want to hire you and uh, the congratulation message so uh, just like that Adi set himself uh, apart from other applicants by impressing a super company with his extensive knowledge on design patterns. Bravo, Adi, this deserves some confettis. And that's it, guys. So we see two ways of implementing the factory pattern. And uh, by using this pattern, we can uh, separate the responsibility of creating objects, making it easy to change the way those objects are created without affecting the rest of the code. I hope this video was helpful in explaining what the factory pattern is and how to implement it. If you have any questions or uh, comments, please leave them in the comment section down below and uh, don't forget to uh, like this video and subscribe to this channel. It helps me a lot. 
and uh, i'll see you in the next one bye